We have a few announcements this morning. Uh, first of all, many of you uh, gave a great response to the request for um, supplies for West Jefferson, uh, brought it to the social hall. Tom Sumner has been heading that up. He asked that I tell you that we really appreciate everything that was donated. We are going to continue to support that effort he will be in the sanctuary for a few minutes right after church if you want to learn more about Westminster and what is going on, West Jefferson, and what is going on there. Uh, also, tomorrow there will be a wish list set up on Amazon if you would like to just have something shipped directly to West Jefferson. You can do that, or if you prefer to have it shipped here and let Tom take it when he goes next, well, we can do that too. But probably just simplify things to send it straight to West Jefferson or ship it to his house so we do appreciate that and once again we, we all have been without power some of us still without power but compared with our neighbors in North Carolina we have had a minor inconvenience uh, Jeff did you want to say something well, the other thing is um, there are volunteer opportunities if you want to go to Asheville and work for a day with Samaritan's Purse, and there's some other things I know about. I'm going to be here at, afterwards with Tom, and we can talk more about it, but okay. those things exist, and it's just a one-day commitment if you want to do that, so or more. more. So in case you did not hear him, some opportunities with Samaritan's Purse, for uh, one day work in Asheville. Uh, you can work more than one day, but it's just a day at a time. Uh, so he will also be with Tom after church if you have questions or want to participate. Also on October 20th, uh, Tom and Kelly will be hosting a bonfire and cookout at their house. Save that date. On Sunday, October 27th from 5 to 6.30, we will have trunk or treat. We need volunteers for decorating trunks and also providing candy and goodies for the children. If you can let Jennifer Landa know uh, if you will help with that. Pew pads, if you have not signed the pew pads, please sign those, pass them to the end of the row. That person on the end of the row, please tear the sheet off and put it in the collection plate. Are there any other announcements? And also, one other thing, uh, the bulletin is actually last week's bulletin. This is not September the 29th. Thank goodness we still don't have more days of no power to go through. And I am not Lindsay Rogers. And only to be that age again and to be that pretty would be nice, but <laughs> you get what you get. Okay. Uh, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Oh, I got one more announcement. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was checking something. Uh, real quick, uh, here's, a, here's, a, here's a, a good announcement on a good note. We have the Christmas cantata coming up, believe it or not. It's time to start preparing for it. It's going to be really good this year. We're getting extra musical instruments. Um, it's going to be a, 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 a bigger affair. However, seeing as we're going to have more instruments, that mean, means we need more, uh, more singers. Um, so, so what you know what you're signing up for, because you always want to know what you're signing up for, we're going to start practicing this Wednesday. You can come for about the first 30 minutes of practice. We'll do Christmas for about the first 30 minutes, and then we start working on the, uh, the stuff for the regular thing. You're welcome to stay for that, but if you said, I'm just here for the cantata, then you can leave at that time, and then we'll perform that time. That's how they got me. Okay, so now I wear a dress every, uh, and every Sunday. And so... Um, but, it, uh, but, but it's, it, the, you're only making a commitment for the cantata 30 minutes every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Christmas does not start until the cantata happens. And so uh, we would love, you don't have to be great. You don't even have to be that good. I'm proof of it. So it just, if you have 
any any singing ability, uh, please start with us this Wednesday. It's a lot of fun. It's actually a lot of fun. So um, we could use you if we need you, and it's a great performance. Thank you. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended to hell. hell. The, the third day he rose again from the dead. dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of God, God the Father, Father Almighty. Almighty. From, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church, Church, the communion the of saints, saints, the forgiveness, forgiveness of, sins, of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please re remain standing and turn to hymn 174.
Please be seated as the children make their way forward. church till up the end of the week well, I wasn't going to redo a bulletin just for this so I said well you know what the way it's worked out this is actually a better time to do this message on World Communion Sunday so I've got I've got us a little little hickey bob here we're going to talk about our, our text today y'all know what hickey bob is I don't either I don't think nobody knows come on welcome sweetheart have a seat I don't really know what it is either. It's just something we used to say. Um, it, yeah, kind of. It's kind of a science experiment, a little thing we're going to share. Uh, we, we, uh, uh, this text this morning is about Moses parting the Red Sea. You all know that story? They, they, fled, they fled Egypt. They, got, they had their back against the wall. There's a mountain behind them, a sea in front of them, and they're stuck, in them. They're stuck without anywhere to go. And they, they were boxed in. That's the name of my sermon this morning. Kind of boxed in where you couldn't move. And, and, and Moses raises his, raises his arms up and, and, and God parted the Red Sea and said they walked across on dry ground. That's pretty amazing, I think, isn't it? Pretty amazing. So I, I thought I, I got a little experiment I was going to show you. I was going to show you how things, how things operate. Last fall, the sherry head in This is red sea water, though it's good. <laughs> so, so this this is kind of that's that's pepper, right? All right. Now watch what happens. I put my finger in. Can y'all see this? Watch what happens. Nothing. Nothing. Well, really, nothing happens. I mean, it just kind of. But now, now, now I want to show you something. Now, now watch what happens when the Lord gets in control of it. Watch this. Hey, what about that? That paper like went, whoa. It went to the sides. It got out of Dawn. I don't know what it is about Dawn and paper don't like each other. And, and I, don't, I, I can't explain that scientifically, but all I know is that, is that water was parted. And God parted the waters. The Israelite the Israel people went through. And then what happened? Y'all remember the story? What happened after that? Amen. 
Amen. Amen. All right. Do you have any, anything you want to say? You, you say that again. We were literally boxed in. You couldn't get out of your you couldn't get out of your driveway, could you? For the longest time. For the yeah, two days. That's a long time. Get stuck in behind a tree. So anyway, you could. But the Lord has spared our lives, and we just thank God that everybody's everybody's doing okay. So. And so we just continue to pray for all those folks up in those flood ravaged areas. Those are, and there's several people have died. It's, it's, it's a big mess up in that area. So we just continue to pray. We're going to help them. We're going to take truckloads of stuff up there. We're going to help every way we can to get them back on their feet. Amen? Amen. Let's all pray together, okay? Dear Jesus, we love you with all of our hearts. And when we feel boxed in, there is a sea to split, an escape route, a way to move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. get over it. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. As we uh, go to the prayers of the people, I want to just uh, thank the for the outpouring of love and support. And thank, and, and thank my brother Tom. He's he's really Tom and Ed. And there's others I know that have helped and, and spearheaded uh, getting supplies up to uh, to folks that are in uh, that are in need up in that area. So uh, if you want to make a donation to that, you're certainly welcome. Uh, there will be financial needs, and we've, uh, folks, it's going to be months, so we're going to have plenty of opportunities to go and uh, help help folks uh, get back on their feet. Uh, in 2016, West Virginia had a devastating flood, much like this, just a smaller area, and uh, uh, the outpouring of, from all over the country, from all over the country, uh, we had uh, people helped us, so it's time for all of us to step up in this uh, great time of, of uh, time of great need. So uh, there's plenty of opportunities for that. <clears throat> all right, for uh, prayer requests or, or glory sightings. We're in the midst of all this chaos, we've seen glory sightings, haven't we? We've seen, we've seen all sorts of good things come out of this bad event. So uh, what, where have you seen the Lord at work? Missy. Amen. Good. Wow. <laughs> Definitely talking. Good deal. Thank you, Miss. Anybody else? S Sandra. So, just. That's all right. <laughs> I don't know how that fits in the glory sighting, but I will we'll think. <laughs> glory, I know you have.
Oh, wow. You know, it was like, you know, it was a good feeling. Yeah. And Amen. Then on Friday, I got a glory side, a big hug from a little fella and got to play with him, and that just warmed my heart. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Uh, Kelly. Amen. Ed, you knocked me out of the saddle. <laughs> Just kidding. Thank you. Amen. Somebody here. Sue. Uh, this week, there were some ladies, school teachers, who had no power at their house, and they were at the laundromat doing their laundry. And a lineman came in and wanted to know if there was an attendant that they could pay to do their laundry. And these ladies stepped up. They've been doing laundry for linemen since... Wednesday late. They have done over 400 loads of laundry. Wow. At the laundromat by Granny's in Enma. Um, they have asked for donations of laundry detergent and quarters. So I was there yesterday. There was a lady came in with $200 worth of quarters. It takes them about six to eight dollars a load to wash and dry. Yeah. So, um, you know, I think they're going to be going back to work maybe Tuesday. But they're worried about who's going to wash these linemen's clothes when they're coming back to work. Yeah. And I have the latest number. So if you want to help wash clothes later this week, please give me a call. And then if they're still washing clothes Tuesday, we'll see if we can't step up and get the linemen's clothes washed. But that was a glory sighting. That's a glory sighting. Amen. People stepping up. They always do. The Lord's people are that way. They're just who they are. It's who we are. We, we see a need and we try to meet that need best we can. Amen. Anybody? Uh, uh, Jennifer. Um, we, we see God's goodness at, at our house. Um, you know, Jacob said the other day, um, you know, we're going to have to start doing some of the laundry Amen. Amen. God bless you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody, uh, uh, Amy and Frank Beeson were uh, completely wiped out of their house, but uh, I, I understand there's a crew already working on it to get it. It was a rental home, and they're already working to get it, get them back in. So they they hope to be back in it pretty soon. So pray pray for Frank and Amy. Uh, I think that's the worst damages that we had in the church family, as far as I know. Wanda. I was in Tennessee when Helene hit, and we left T Pigeon Forge at 11 o'clock Friday morning. And it took us 12 hours to get back to Inman because we had to go up past Bristol because we had to keep going, turning around and going back because we had a rock slide, yeah. mud slides and everything. And our bus driver kept up with where everything was going on and we had to go up past Bristol and finally come back down across North Carolina. And it was 11.30 when I walked in my house yeah. Friday night. And all 12 hour was, drive. Uh, yeah, something that usually takes what, three or four two, hours. Two to three hours, yeah. yeah. Wow. That was a glory sighting, even though you couldn't see Spartanburg or Inman when we came through. The only thing I saw was the lights from the community fire department. They had the lights because the generator. You and didn't recognize anything. But when I got home, I just took a shower and went to bed. But that was a glory sighting. Amen. It was. It took her 12 hours to get from Pigeon Forge, <laughs> normally a two, three hour driver. So, depending on who's driving and what you're driving, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Juan. That's uh, that's that's a glory sighting. Uh, those roads are gone for a year. I-40 and and uh, 26 is wiped out. I, I know those roads well. I travel them often. Uh, those those are those are part of our way going to West Virginia at some sometimes. Anybody else? Anybody else? Still got to, Kathy, please.
Yeah. Wow. And that was just God just putting people in the right path yeah. and, and contacting them yeah. to find out that there's half a second. Amen. Thank the Lord. I found that all over the world. You'll find God's people are everywhere. And when you have a need, I don't care if you're in another country, I don't care where you are. There's, there's church people there. And we have a built-in network because we come out of the same source. We're out of the same source. So that's, that's another testimony of, of uh, those are mountain people up there. I know mountain people. Uh, mountain people are tough. And they'll get through this, I promise you, just fine when it's all said and done. Tough, tough people. Thank the Lord. Anybody else? Roger, please. Bless him, Lord. Yeah, bless your heart. Can you see all this stuff that's going up the hill? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really wish I wasn't this way. I wish I was. It's okay. Uh, bless bless, um, bless your heart. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Beautiful, beautiful testimony. Uh, beautiful testimony. Are there anybody else would like to share? I see. I see Francis back there.
Hugh, Hugh's home. Hugh's doing pretty amazing from where he come from. He's he's doing pretty pretty well. So that is a glory sight. He was up catting around, walking around, just moving moving around very well. So uh, that that is certainly a glory sighting. I know we have. Are there others? Are there? Is there a, a prayer request you'd like to hold up that? Uh, Jer Jerry Langley is back home, and uh, I got her some food yesterday, and she's amazing. She's doing she's doing better, so uh, we just continue to pray for her. She's uh, she's pretty uh, set that she's going to stay home, and uh, so we just uh, do what we can to help out. So, is there anybody else? Uh, Elizabeth. Amen. Thank you, Elizabeth. Another beautiful testimony. So Amen. Amen. Good deal. Anybody else? Uh, Pastor Doug. Our youngest son, grandson, Wells, who will be one year old, 23rd this month, fell down the stairs and broke his leg. Thursday, uh, Friday night. So he's in a body cast for several years. Oh, wow. Amen. Doing well, got him patched up. Good. Thank you, Doug. Anybody else? Missy. Amen. Lorraine Cochran. 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 Okay, God's Kaufman. Thank you. Anybody else? Roger, please. Missing. Yeah. Lisa Peel are missing from Chimney Rock. Yes. So. Uh, Jerry Griffith and her family, they had a, a tree, mostly took out the garage and the storage room, just barely hit the corner of the house. But she and her daughter had been in a motel in Gastonia. But uh, Gerald came by yesterday and he said he got her back home. They're trying to get cleaned up enough so they can get her mother back home, who is in the hospice house right now, while they're displaced. But um, they need our prayers. Amen. Jerry Griffin's family, they did have some house damage. Yes. Any, anybody else? No. Ed, Pat. Yeah, that's... Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, continue to pray for Anna Gossett. She is in a, a medical facility there at the same, the same building. But uh, remember, remember her. She's, she's just going through a hard time, and, and she's weak. She's real weak. Any, anybody else? Anybody else? One more, Roger.
Jacob Leslie. Jacob Leslie. Anybody, anybody else? Yeah, yeah. We have a Sherry has a niece that's clear, almost her age, and uh, she was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. And uh, Sherry's both her uh, sisters are elderly, and uh, both need our prayers. And also, uh, my grandson Gavin is. Uh, I don't know where he's at. He's he was called up. He's in the National Guard, so he's he's in this. He's out there somewhere, uh, helping the flood folks. I don't know where he's at. Um, so. Pray for those situations. Anybody else? I want us to do something. Before Sue leads us in the prayers of the people, I want you to know that everything's going to be all right. God, God is going to walk with us through this. He's going to hold our hands. And, and, and so what I want us to do before Sue prays, I want you, and I want you to do this. I want you to just, I want you to take a real deep breath and let it out slow. Don't that feel good? Everything's going to be all right, folks. The Lord has got our hand, and he's going to guide us and direct us in the path of righteousness, and the glory of the Lord is already being made known as we walk through what I call the human experiences that we live through. So, Sue, pray for us, pray with us, and let's all be in an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to praise and worship you on this holy day. You have brought us safely through the storm and we count our many blessings. There's been much devastation, but amid all of it, there's been much good. People have come together to share and to help their neighbors. The outpouring of help and love to our neighbors in North Carolina has been overwhelming. We've been cut off from many We've been cut off from many things we thought were essential, but found out we could sit on our porches and in our yards and visit our neighbors. Children played outside rather than on screens. People came together to help each other. Right now, it's hard to know what, what and how to pray. We don't know where we go from here. We don't know what's happening or how to process it all. We don't know what to do with our emotions or how to handle the situation. But we have faith in you, and we know that you know, and we leave it with you. You are our strength and our redeemer. We ask a special blessing today on all the linemen, first responders, and all the boots on the ground helping others. May we all come together to help those in need. We were mildly inconvenienced compared to many. We serve a mighty God and we thank you for our blessings. We pray for the situation in the Middle East, Lord, and we pray for our troops that have been sent there. We pray for healing for all who are sick and facing surgery and dealing with health issues. We pray for peace for all who are lonely and hurting. Wrap your loving arms around them and help them to know your love. Be with Rick as he brings us your word this morning and be with us as we feast at your table on this World Communion Sunday. Now let us join together in the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. 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 Let's take a few moments for our scripture meditation you'll find in your bulletin. Let's join together. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? 
Amen. Let's stand as you're able to sing page 130. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, please be seated. As our ushers make their way forward, we continue to worship God through giving God's tithes and offerings. join together. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We bring your tithes and our offerings to you, that they will be multiplied into ministry in this community. May the blessing be great to all givers. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
Uh, the anthem today is Followers of the Lamb. It's special to this church in a couple of ways. Ann and I commissioned Joseph Martin in 2008 to write it in memory of our daughter, uh, Susan, and, uh, and also to c commemorate the 100th anniversary of this church. Well, a lot of you didn't know Susan. Probably most of you didn't know her. The Sunday before she died, uh, a friend invited her to go to Holly Springs to uh, Sunday night church service, and she went. And the next day, two deacons showed up and said, uh, Mr. Mrs. Hodge, would you like to join our church? And we said, no, we go to Granlin. And they said, Susan, what would happen if you died today? And she said, oh, I'd go to heaven. And he said, how do you know that? And uh, she said, well, God sent his son to die for, for my sins, so I'm going to heaven. Just matter, very matter of fact. She worked for Henry and Eric in the peat shed that summer. And the next day, on Tuesday, she came home, roaring like a lion, flexing. And I said, Susan, what are you doing? She said, I really showed Eric today. And I said, what? She said, I asked him to let me load cartons on the truck and he said no it was too heavy for girls and to go back to the inspection line I said what did you do she said I went and started loading trucks and she said and I loaded more trucks than any of those boys <laughs> so that gives you a flavor for her the other side of this church started in 1908 put that in perspective it's the first year Henry Ford made Model T's Today, 2024, marks 116 years. A lot of good and a lot of bad, including what happened over the last week, has happened. It's comforting to know that throughout all of that time, people have come to Gramlin to worship God and to follow the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord.
those who are willing and able, please stand for the reading of a scripture. Our text this morning is Exodus 14, verses 10 through 16 and 31, 30 through 31. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, Leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. And Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Raise your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that the Israelites may go through and see dry ground. That day the Lord saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians lying dead on the shore. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses his servant. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Please be seated. It just it just occurred to me this whole service is a glory society. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why. Most of the time, most of the time, uh, I'm I'm at least two weeks and sometimes three weeks. Uh, I, I start preparing. If, I, if I'm a week, if I'm only a week behind, I mean a week ahead, I get nervous. I start, I start thinking. Usually, I'm on two sermons away. This, this sermon, this message, I questioned it at the time because I've been, I've been hanging out in Romans. Most of you know if you've been here the last three or four months, I've been living in Romans pretty much the, for a while. And, and but for some reason, I, I never, I don't know. I just. Uh, the Lord, the Lord impressed on me to this this message. Well, all of the, if, if I had been asked to put a service together as a result of all that we've seen here and we've experienced with all that's going on, th this this probably would have been something like what it would have looked like. And 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 long before that storm even started. The Lord was already working in our minds and hearts. Everything, the music, everything about this service was foreordained by God. And I just, I, it's just, it's just an amazing thing. And the choir was outstanding this morning. Beautiful tribute. And thank you, Donnie, for a beautiful testimony. And, and I, I, I did get shook a little bit. I looked over and Mindy was sitting over here. I'm, I'm, I'm on the wrong side. What's going on? And, uh, but, but anyway... It, this this was meant for today, three weeks ago. And and the bulletin, I mean, I always say the Lord uses you in spite of you, not because of you. The bulletin was all put together for last week. We didn't get to have church. We couldn't even get back into church. We didn't have power here till Thursday morning. Well, I told Anita, we're not going to do a new bulletin. We're not going to go through all that effort. So the bulletin is really just a result. I didn't want to deal with it. It's that simple. I didn't want to go through, change out a couple little things or even, or, or I would have had a world communion service. I would have, the whole thing would have been around world communion. I said, I'm not going to deal with it. I was out of town for most of the week because there wasn't no power. And so you, the Lord used my laziness to, to say, you know what, this is what needs to be. This service is foreordained by God. So I, I hope you hear this message in a new way. There's, there's a lot of times I feel like there's events as they unfold in my life, there's a feeling of helplessness that overwhelms us. There, I mean, at the end of the day, we were helpless. When that storm was coming through here, we were helpless to keep, keep trees from falling on power lines in our houses or even falling on us as far as that goes. Too many times I felt like a, a spectator, and that's how I felt all week. I felt like I was in the bleachers of a football game, and, and like a football game, and there's a train coming from the left, and there's a train coming from the right, and they're going to meet in the middle, and all I can do is watch it crash. Do you ever feel that way? 
You're just totally, and, 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 and you're just you're just watching it unfold. Totally helpless to stop it. There's a there's days that I feel like that scene that represents our nation. It represents our community and our world. Could it be that our our arrogance and pride has lulled us in to a sense of in, invincibility? Did you notice how quick your standard of living took a nose dive when when you're sitting in the dark stinking? Amen? Didn't take long, did it? It didn't take long. You didn't even have clean clothes to put on. Much less get to take a bath. And some people got to take a cold bath. Well, at least that will really, exhilarate you a little bit. So your help, that, that arrogance and pride, that we're somehow invincible. I have the same, uh, the, the, watching these storms come through. I just, I just destroying our lives, our property, and destroying, uh, killing people, and taking out our infrastructure. I can imagine how the children of Israel, you know what, they, they would have felt much like that that day, wouldn't they? Backed up against the sea, Pharaoh's army breathing down their neck. I know what it feels like to be boxed in. I know what it feels like when something is breathing down your neck. I remember laying... In 2000, April 2019, I laid beside of my mommy as she was taking her last breaths. I slept with my mother the night before she died. I laid right beside her the whole night. I was boxed in. I couldn't fix it. I couldn't fix it. June of 1982, I stood at Mann Hospital. I was close to Sherry's mother. She treated me better than she did Sherry. She did. She was afraid I'd bring her back. <laughs> her, her mother treated me like a son. She really did. And I stood in Man Hospital, watching those feelings of futility as they tried to res uh, resuscitate her mother. I was boxed in. My back was to the wall, and I couldn't do nothing but watch it. We're reminded of the prophets over the years that wept over Israel because Israel had forsaken the ways of God. As an American today, I feel boxed in. The forces of evil are everywhere trying to tear this nation apart. And we come here to bear witness today of our faith in God and for God to deliver us from the evil that surrounds us. The Israelites are led into the wilderness. They're camping exactly where God has, has led them. The, the Egyptians caught up with them. And you could easily see the, the terror that, the, that would have overcome them that day. As you read that story, we know why God did what he did. But his directions were very perplexing at the time. The day had a purpose. And we, we need to remember that God knows what he's doing even when we don't understand. It's hard sometimes. God gave his directions. God knew the full consequences. We read that God communicated his plans to Moses. He added the words, The king will think that the Israelites are wandering around in the countryside, closed in by the desert, and I'll make him stubborn, and they'll pursue, and you'll have victory over the king and his army, and it will bring honor to myself. The, Egypt the Egyptians will know that day that I am the Lord. God sees the end from the beginning. God had commanded them to pitch their tents in that place. Now you're looking back. You know, hindsight, have you ever noticed hindsight is beautiful? It is. It's beautiful. Man, if I, could, if I would have known, if I could have known, should have, could have, would have, drive you crazy. It's a beautiful thing. We have a benefit today. As we look back, we have the benefit of the full explanation of what was going on. We know that God was leading them in, the, in that direction on account of their limitations with the purpose of giving full victory over Pharaoh. They didn't have the benefit of that knowledge. They didn't know. All they saw was the storm in front of them. All they saw was certain death. They were backed up against the, the, the ocean. When God leads us into a mysterious place, that's where we've been. Fear is apt to take over. It was a hopeless cry. All they saw was death ahead. 
they complained to Moses for bringing them into this Egyptian, into this uh, wilderness to die by the hand of the Egyptians. For them, bondage was better than death. Moses should have left them alone in Egypt. They'd have full fear and doubt of having soon forgotten the mighty acts of God that led them to that very place, all the plagues that had taken place. Have you noticed that God deliver us, delivers us, when, but when the road gets bumpy, we go right back into fear and doubt. Hello, I represent that remark. Don't we all at times in our lives, God did not disclose all the reasons. I didn't know, nobody knew what God had on his mind. He, in, he instructed the Israelites to encamp by the sea. We cry out in fear trying to understand the circumstances. And many times we don't have enough details through all of the, to, to understand the, the human gyrations and chaos that we see. But God's plan is always there if we trust and obey for there's no other way. God gives us just enough faith to act that we might prove God's faithfulness with the Red Sea in front of them the mountains behind them, an enraged Egyptian army closing in. God led the Israelites to the place where, honey, they were boxed in. They had nowhere to go. They were, it would have been like shooting fish in a barrel. The, the Egyptians could have just rolled over that, that bunch of Israelites in just a few minutes. But he worked it out according to his purpose. God would deliver his people the day that day. The, uh, the very predicament, the pledge would be that they would find out what was going on. How many times in our lives personally or in a community we find ourselves with that kind of fear? We find ourselves often with that kind of fear. But we need to nurture and cherish the same kind of confidence that God, whatever we're walking through, I walk through the valley, the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For he is with me. Whatever is coming our way, I promise you, you and God can handle it. Moses reacted with confidence. I imagine on some level, on a human level, Moses would have been trembling on some level. He didn't know it precisely what God was going to do, but he felt God was going to deliver Israel. Don't be afraid. He said, stand your ground. You'll see what the Lord will do that day. You'll never see these Egyptians again. The Lord's going to fight for you. You're going to have victory today. Now we come to an interesting part of the story, like the rest of it wasn't, it always. After Moses made this bold statement about not being afraid, he started praying to God. But here's what I found interesting. He started praying to God, and God replied by rebuking him. He said, why are you crying to me for help? Now, that's, that's my uh, interpretation. Why are you crying to me? Tell the people to move forward. Basically, Moses was scolded by God for standing still and not moving forward. Now, I can't know for sure, but I suspect after reading the whole story, God had provided a pillar of cloud by day and fire by night to, to lead him there. This pillar had led him to the Red Sea and eventually moved behind him to guard him against the Egyptians for a period of time. Moses was praying. The Israelites were complaining. Moses had his hands full. The pillar of cloud was showing the way. Moses' command fell short of God's divine plan. And Moses told his people to stand still. And God said, go forward. The way out is forward. The Lord told Moses to stop praying and get to moving. Prayer at this moment needed to be exchanged for action. Now this is where I think we all can relate. Prayer is an important part of our lives. I felt like this was a sanctuary of prayer this very day. But there's also a place for action. And for years, I've used the notion of prayer many times, and I guarantee you, you have too. For I use the notion of prayer to keep me standing still. You know, here's the fact. Sometimes we know what to do. We don't want to do it, so we pray about it. Did I slap everybody in here with a two before? Sometimes we know what the right thing is. I just don't want to do it. 
I need to pray about it until the Lord humbles my heart enough to go do what I should have done yesterday. If we know what we should do, it's time to get on with it. What is it in your life you're praying about? What is it in your life? There's some direction you're seeking in your life. It's about a relationship maybe. Or, 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 or are there sins in your life that you don't want to deal with? So, Because so, you know if you dealt with it, it might get messy. You feel boxed in. You feel you're suffocating under the heaviness of sin. You keep praying, Lord, remove this from my life. Maybe God is rebuking you like he did Moses. Maybe it's time to quit praying and start moving. Amen or ouch. When we're boxed in, we faced with a situation that there's no apparent way out, we're going to react in one of three ways. We'll panic like the Israelites did because, because we, we, we forget what God has done in the past. We give way to our fear and unbelief. Or like Moses, we may seek God's face even though the guidance was clearly given. Or we may go forward in answer to divine guidance that's already been given us. I've said that many times. I've prayed, I've prayed that over, over my lifetime. Lord, I know what i got to do, but I don't want to do it. So I'm going to spend another day in prayer. <laughs> that's what the Lord wanted Israel to do, not to panic. At this point, not to pray but to push forward across the Red Sea. See, God is calling us to move forward. Sure, life has been difficult at times. Sure, we have challenges at times. But God is always leading us forward. God would never lead us in, in this church or in our lives where retreat is necessary or a, where a place of advancement is not possible. We're soldiers of the army of God. We're called to advance the kingdom of God. General George Patton, as he was taking, taking Europe in World War II, he said, don't call me telling me you're holding territory. We're not here to hold anything. We are constantly advancing. Go forward in spite of your reasonings. Why was Israel reluctant to follow the angel of the Lord? Why was Israel reluctant to follow the pillar of cloud of the God? And surely they reasoned this way. How can we go forward? Are you serious? It's impossible to cross the Red Sea. I don't have any boats. We see the pillar of cloud. We cannot understand his movements. When we don't understand, our faith is stymied. It's our logic that shuts our faith down. God brings us to the place, boxed in, so that we can exercise our faith. But we thwart his purpose by our clever logic. We got anybody ever shoot pool in here? I grew up, my uncle had a little old pool hall there at the house. You ever shoot pool? Played, played uh, eight ball, played blue ball, and played nine ball. And back then, it was a quarter of a ball, right? A quarter was a lot of money back in 1970, 72, long in there. A lot of money, man. 75 cents a game you could lose. That's an hour's work. <laughs> Anybody ever do that? Well, if you're shooting pool, and especially if there's a, a dollar on the line, a mommy never did know that. I, she didn't like me to do that, and I didn't tell her. <laughs> so, mommy, well, she heard me, didn't she? But anyway, we'd, we'd play, and I'd, sometimes I'd win a little bit. And some, but you know what I learned about shooting pool? Is, is when you see a shot, in other words, you know what's, what's got to happen, and you, start, you go up there and you shoot that shot, I was successful a pretty good lot of the time. But you know when I looked at that shot, and I'd walk around the table, and that, this is like praying about it. I'd walk around that table, I'd look, I'd look, and I'd look some more, and the easiest of shots I've missed. Here's what I learned. Study long, you study wrong. I used to say that. Study long, you study wrong. You see what needs to be done, go do it. That's what God's calling us to do. When you see what needs to be done, go do it. You study long, you let your logic kick in, and all this stuff happens, and all these, these angles and nuances happen, and at the end of the day, you don't do nothing, and nothing happens, and the glory of the Lord is not known in your life. You study long, you study wrong. 
whether it's nine ball or your daily life, it's the same thing. We're not responsible in our own power for owning the sea. We're not responsible to defeat the enemy. You see, our, our, our responsibility is to trust. Trust that God is who God says he is. Have you felt boxed in this week? I think most of you have. You felt boxed in. What's the purpose of God's bringing us to a place where we can see no way out? Are you boxed in? You see, you look up. Your deliverance, your deliverance is already there. Look up. Your salvation is near to those that are living in faith in Jesus Christ. It's what we might trust Him, that we might move in the direction that He wants us to go. I'm, I'm telling you, sometimes it's time to stop praying about it. It's time to start moving according to what God has called you to do. Move forward, church. Move forward. Whatever that is in your life that you've been praying about, it might be time to stop praying. God's showing you the way. Let's bow our heads just for a moment. Thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful service, for the beautiful uh, spirit that has inhabited your people. God, we are a needy people. We were reminded once again of just how fragile our, our existence is, just how fragile our lives are, and how we depend on uh, so many things to make our standard of living uh, what it is. And it can be uh, snapped away just in a few, just a few seconds. So God, open our hearts and minds. Let us always, always trust in you as we pray for direction. But then when we're given direction, let's move forward under the power and the guidance and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen and amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We're going to gather with... Uh, churches from around the world this morning all over the world they're gathering around this table the table of the Lord the Lord invites all to his table that have repented of their sins and seek to live in harmony with each other through Jesus our Lord so if you'll turn to page uh, 13 in your hymnal <coughs> begin at the uh, at the great thanksgiving on page 13 the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you God Almighty creator of heaven and earth and so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so in remembrance of, of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world. Strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let's stand as we're able to sing page 452.
I'm still less than that. We're doing good. So let's uh, let's hear these words of benediction. Remain standing for the poor place. As we go from this place, know that, that no boxed in experience will, will ever leave us helpless because God will lead us through in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.